For most of the previous century, the story of how humans first arrived in the Americas was cast in stone, literally. Clovis Point's expertly fluted stone spear tips, first discovered in New Mexico in the 1920s, were long hailed as the hallmark of the first Americans. This so-called Clovis First hypothesis held that nomadic hunters had crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia and swept southward around 13,500 years ago, armed with these deadly weapons. But the slow emergence of skeletal remains of the Leanderthal Lady, the Gordon Creek Woman, and the Buell Woman, alongside discoveries of pre-Clovis tools at places like the Galt Site, have ignited a dramatic debate about what kind of people were here before Clovis, how they lived, and what they looked like. The clues emerging from bones and bifaces are rewriting the origin story of Native Americans and calling into question not just when the Americas were peopled, but by whom. Buried gently in an oval depression outside what is now Leander, Texas, some 11,000 years ago, the young woman known as the Leanderthal Lady was only between 18 and 25 years old when she died. Her body was placed on its side in a flexed position, arms folded, knees drawn up. A mano, a worn, grinding stone, was placed beside her, and a large limestone slab rested above her. The care taken in her burial suggests a people with social structure, rituals, and emotional bonds. But beyond the story told by her death lies a deeper puzzle in her bones. Her facial morphology does not resemble typical Northeast Asian traits seen in most modern Native Americans. Instead, her features resemble the enigmatic Lagoa Santa skulls of Brazil, individuals with a so-called Paleo-American morphology. These skulls show traits more in line with modern populations from Southeast Asia, Melanesia, or even some Polynesian groups. This raises the question, was the first wave of Americans biologically different from the groups that followed them? The presence of archaic-style tools and grinding implements around her grave suggests a transitional cultural phase. At the Wilson Leonard site, where she was found, archaeologists documented several cultural layers. These included pre-Clovis and Paleo-Indian levels, but also later cultural elements. The stratigraphy revealed a mix of technologies and lifestyles, implying that the transition from highly mobile Paleo-Indian hunters to more settled peoples was not smooth or linear. It was mosaic and complex. In other words, she lived at a crossroads, both in time and in cultural identity. 800 miles to the north in Colorado's Roosevelt National Forest, another young woman was interred roughly around 9,400 to 9,700 years ago on the banks of Gordon Creek. The Gordon Creek woman lay on her left side, tightly flexed, her skull pointed north. Her grave had been prepared with care. She was dusted in red ochre, and her burial included a large percussion-flaked biface, smaller scraping tools, an end scraper, a hammer stone, and pierced animal bones, including a perforated elk incisor. These grave goods are a powerful testament to ritual behavior and technological sophistication. But it is her skull that has raised eyebrows. When analyzed using advanced morphometrics and principal component analysis, Gordon Creek Woman showed significant differences from later Native American groups. According to anthropologist Steele and Powell, her features placed her closer to Southern Asians and Europeans than to Northeast Asians, who were assumed to be the ancestors of most Native Americans. Some craniologists classified her dentition as consistent with Northeast Asian traits, but this contrasts with her cranial structure. This juxtaposition shows the difficulties in classifying early Paleo-Americans using modern racial or ethnic categories. Rather than fitting neatly into any one group, she stands as a biological outlier, a reflection of the diversity and complexity of early populations. Her inclusion in a small but growing list of Paleo-Indian female skeletons also challenges earlier anthropological biases, which often dismissed female skulls as being less definitive than male ones. Gordon Creek woman's story is part of a broader awakening. These early American women are not afterthoughts. They are essential data points in solving the riddle of ancient migration, all of which lie far from the coast. 500 miles west of Gordon Creek in southern Idaho, near the town of Buell, and 300 miles southeast of the famous Kennewick Man site in eastern Washington state, a gravel quarry unearthed something extraordinary, 
a disarticulated human skeleton that turned out to be over 12,700 years old, the Buell woman, possibly a maternal ancestor of Kennewick man. Her bones told a rich and detailed story. Only about 17 to 21 years old at the time of death, she was short but healthy, standing around 5 feet 2 inches. Her diet, analyzed through isotopic studies, showed a heavy reliance on meat and fish, especially salmon, indicating sophisticated fishing and cooking techniques. The burial also included unusual grave goods. A pressure-flaked obsidian point lay beneath her cheek, untouched by use, clearly a ritual offering. An incised badger baculum, penis bone, a possible awl, and a bone needle were found nearby. These grave goods, paired with her flexed burial position and the condition of her teeth, suggest a vibrant culture with specific funerary traditions. The real controversy arises from the skull itself. Anthropologist Richard Jantz noted that her morphology did not match any known modern Native American group, but instead resembled Polynesians. Todd Fenton, in contrast, suggested her skull could fall within the American Indian range. The disagreement reveals the slippery nature of morphology in early remains. Without genetic testing, which was not performed, this remains unresolved, but the implications are profound. If she does resemble Polynesian populations, does this suggest a coastal migration along the Pacific Rim, possibly from Southeast Asia or even Oceania? Her association with the Western-stemmed tradition, a set of tools possibly as old as or older than Clovis, adds further depth. This tradition includes stemmed projectile points and bifaces often found in the Pacific Northwest and Great Basin, supporting theories of an early coastal peopling of the Americas. For the best part of 50 years, American archaeology was locked in a dogma that they actually had a name for, which was Clovis first. Uh, that they invented a name for a culture. They called them the Clovis culture. We don't know what they called themselves. They were hunter-gatherers. Uh, they first appear in the archaeological record 13,000 400 years ago, and they vanished from the archaeological record 12,600 years ago. And for a very long time, it was maintained adamantly that these were the first Americans. Any archaeologist who challenged that would face severe problems with his or her career. But stone tools, usually crafted by men, also tell a story. Just 25 miles from the Wilson Leonard site and Leanderthal Lady's grave lies one of North America's most important archaeological treasures the Galt site. For decades, it had been known as a place where Clovis points could be found in abundance, but recent excavations have taken it far beyond that. Stratigraphic analysis and optically stimulated luminescence dating have revealed a hidden layer of artifacts lying beneath the Clovis level, suggesting human occupation between 16,000 and 20,000 years ago. This so-called Galt assemblage includes small projectile points unlike Clovis, blade and core tools, flake tools and bifaces. Some of the bifaces resemble Aculean hand axes from the Old World, tools associated with Neanderthals. Whether this is a functional coincidence or a cultural echo is unclear, but it suggests that early inhabitants of North America brought or developed a tool tradition very different from the fluted Clovis spearheads. What sets Galt apart is its deep context. Located in a valley at the intersection of the Edwards Plateau and the Blackland Prairie, the site offered rich chert outcrops and perennial springs, a perfect base for early settlers. The stone tools at Galt not only push the date of human arrival back, but also suggest a technological tradition that may have nothing to do with Clovis at all. The blade and core tools show continuity with later Clovis traditions, but the biface forms diverge significantly. The projectile points in the Galt assemblage are considered unrelated to Clovis. This challenges the notion that Clovis was a founding culture. Instead, Clovis may have emerged within a pre-existing population, an innovation, not an origin. Taken together, the Galt tools and the skeletal remains of Leanderthal Lady, Gordon Creek Woman and Buell Woman present a coherent challenge to the Clovis First model. These remains show diverse morphologies, some resembling Southeast Asians, others Polynesians, and still others ambiguous or intermediate. None perfectly fit the typical Northeast Asian ancestry of most modern Native Americans. Their tools, 
especially the pre-Clovis bifaces and Western stem tradition artifacts, suggest different technological traditions that arose independently of Clovis or even earlier. The first Americans then were likely not a single wave of hunters moving south through an ice-free corridor 13,000 years ago. Instead, they may have arrived in multiple waves by different routes, some perhaps even by sea, using coastal migration routes along the Pacific Rim. The Leanderthal lady's delicate burial with her mano and limestone capstone, Gordon Creek woman's ochre-stained skeleton and grave offerings, Buell woman's obsidian tribute and possibly Polynesian face all speak to a time long before the dominance of Clovis and its mammoth hunters. These women's lives challenge our simplistic stories. They force us to imagine a peopling of the Americas that was slower, richer, more diverse and more human than we ever believed. The archaeology of these burials, combined with the deeper contexts of the Galt site and others like it, provides the framework for a revised understanding of American prehistory. We are now entering an era where Paleo-Indian is no longer synonymous with Clovis, and where bones and bifaces alike whisper secrets of an ancient migration whose complexity we are only beginning to grasp. The stories of the Leanderthal Lady, Gordon Creek Woman and Buell Woman, illustrate a fundamental transformation in how we understand the first Americans. These are not just skeletal remains. They are individuals, lives once lived in unfamiliar landscapes, carrying genetic and cultural legacies whose echoes are still with us. Their burial positions, grave goods and facial features raise profound questions about identity, migration and memory. And the Galt site, with its ancient tools lying beneath the feet of Clovis, serves as a reminder that what we once saw as a beginning may only be a middle chapter. There were people here before the first Americans. They hunted, fished, carved, buried their dead with reverence, and told their own stories in stone. It is time we listen more closely to what they had to say. <laughs>